Hey guys, welcome to Small Farmer Life. Hope you've all had an awesome weekend. And today, guys, I want to make a video in response to a question I got asked in one of the comment sections. And the question was, will it make any difference if you buy agricultural land that already has buildings on it if you put in a planning application to build a home on that land? So you've bought some agricultural land and it's got several buildings dotted around the place, let's say a barn, set of stables, a few out now, which is here and there. So you want to build a house on there versus building a house on some agricultural land that's got nothing on it. And will it make any difference to the councils and the planning departments across the UK? Well, I can tell you right out the gate, it will make no difference whatsoever. I couldn't care less if the land that you're buying has got 100 buildings on there. They will not take that into consideration when they're looking at your planning application. They just don't do it. It doesn't matter if it's bare land or it's land that's got 10 buildings on there. If it's agricultural land, it's classed as agricultural land. And the councils across the UK are not in the business of granting planning permission for people to build homes on agricultural land unless they deem it so. And they deem it so every five, 10, 15 years when they go back and have a look at the local plan and then they decide where they want to build houses. And the farmers around the town will put their hat in the ring and hopefully if they've got good plans, the council might go with them over another farmer and then decide where they're going to build houses on what you would call agricultural land. They call it greenfield. So the only way to actually get a new house built on agricultural land is do what I've said in other videos, start some sort of rural business, and then the council will find out either by you or they'll come out and see you. But you should always get your caravan on the land first because that's what the council are going to make you do live in a caravan or some other temporary dwelling for three to five years and once you do that then you show them your financials and you show the functionality need to be there and the viability of your business and only when they're totally satisfied will they grant you plan permission to build a house let's say a bungalow or something like that won't be more than one and a half stories for you and your family so if there's only two years, they'll only grant you planning permission for a home that'll suit two years. If there's more of years, you've got kids, they'll let you build a home that's suitable for you and your kids. Now, the home will come with an agricultural tie on it. So if you ever try and sell your farm as a going concern, it can only be sold to a rural worker. It can't be sold on the open market. Well, it can be sold on the open market, but it can only be bought up by a rural worker. So it lose a percentage of its value because not just anybody can buy it but there might be a way you can convert the barn a set of stables or whatever other building could be on the land into a dwelling now you don't have to think about barns being really old they just have to have been built before 2013 if you can find a barn that's been built before 2013 the new legislation brought out by the government this year states that the councils should push through barn conversions and stable conversions relatively easily through Class Q permitted development rights. Now, this is a bit of legislation from the government so they can pull it away any time they want. If you've got a barn and it's got a chance at getting Class Q permitted development rights, which basically means you only have to put a prior application notice into the council to tell them that you're going to convert these barns or you're thinking about converting these barns. Now, they're still going to do the normal test that like is there going to be more traffic and the noise pollution and all that sort of thing like they would with a normal plan application but they still have to pass it through if you pass all those sorts of things that they would do with a normal plan application they can't say right we're not going to let you do that but you've still got to make sure that the permitted development plan application that you're going to be putting in is bang on t because if they don't pass it the first time they're not likely to pass it later on down the line. Now, I know of three buildings just down the road. One of them's a barn, one of them's a set of stables, and one of them looks like a house. It had planning permission to actually build a house on this piece of land, but it lapsed. So it got sold for around about 200 grand. It had 10 acres with it. It had electricity, it had water, it had gas already piped in through the mains. And then it was bought up by a developer who wanted to convert the barns the stables and the other building into three separate homes under Class Q permitted development rights. Now the council still did all the checks that they would do for a normal plan application. They put these little tracks that you see across the road when they're deliberating over a plan application to see how much traffic goes by. 
and it was refused on the basis that the traffic that was going past the entrance was going too fast. So in that area, there's a chance of an accident happening if three homes are built in that area. Now these three barns were getting used regular by people coming and going and nothing happened whatsoever. There was no incidents of car crashes or anything like that. But the council will still do anything in their powers to stop residential properties being built on agricultural land. So it was rejected because the road was too fast where they wanted to actually convert the buildings on the agricultural land, even though it already had planning permission passed in the past. Now, if you're going to be buying agricultural land with barns on it, you need to make sure that you do your checks that no other planning applications have gone in for those buildings because who in the right mind would sell land with buildings on there that could possibly be granted Clash Q permitted development rights to turn into residential properties. You've got to do the checks because you've got to think they could be losing money here and all they'd have to do is put in a prior application notice to the council saying they intend to convert these barns into residential properties. So... You need to make sure you do all your checks. You need to make sure that if you're going to do this, that you can actually nail everything that the council are going to be asking you. Make sure you put a good planning statement in with it and all that sort of thing. But I would always say take heed and make sure if you're buying land that has buildings on it, whether it be barns, stables or whatever it might be, always check the local planning portal. Make sure we know planning applications have gone in for it and make sure it's not in a flood zone or anything like that and also make sure that utilities and all that are right next door and at hand because the council take all this into consideration when they're dealing with planning applications to make sure that it's not going to affect the local traffic or noise pollution or just anything like that the normal checks that the council would do if you put in a normal plan application so again think about it now if you are looking at land to buy with buildings already on it you are going to pay more money for that land also but you're probably better off buying land with buildings on it if you can versus land with no buildings on it because you've got a better chance of going down the four year and one day rule because the buildings are already there now if you haven't heard about the four year and one day rule i'll leave a link in the description below you can go and check that out you might want to think about doing something like that but again check the local planning portal to make sure where no planning applications have gone in for barn conversions on those buildings themselves. There you go, guys. Everything you need to know about buying land with buildings on it. If you've got any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Thanks again to all my patrons. Couldn't thank you guys enough. If you'd like to support the channel, you can do so for less than the price of a cup of coffee. The link's in the description below. If you like the video, hit the like button. If you want to subscribe and you should subscribe, hit the subscribe button. If you want to be notified of my upcoming videos, hit the bell button. My name's Craig, you've been watching The Small Farmer Life. Make sure you take care of yourself. Most of all, take care of the family. As always, be genuine. Bye for now. See you.